Okay, let's take a deeper dive into the U.S. housing market, where it stands right now. Joining us to give his insight is Pesh Barlavi, the owner and CEO of Barlavi Realty. Pesh, thanks for coming in. It's always a pleasure to chat. Thank you for having me on. Um, I kind of want to get right to it. U.S. housing prices remain at historic highs. So talk about this latest news. What does it mean? To put in perspective, housing prices jumped 6.5% in just April. So this seems like potentially a big turnaround. Yeah, it's starting to tick down a little bit, 5.7 um, the month before, as you said, it was a bit higher. So we are seeing a more stabilized uh, residential real estate market in the United States. Um, we talked about the cities, too. I guess no real surprise, New York, 9.4 percent uh, jump in prices. Yeah. In San Diego, Miami, I think a lot of people expect those areas uh, to be up. Talk about the major cities, some of these metropolitan areas, and how difficult is it for people to find a house right now if they can afford? Well, you know, my office is in New York. Um, I'm currently in Florida. We're working on a big um, real estate transaction um, coming up uh, in the next few months. Um, both of those cities, New York, Miami, and uh, San Diego, they are the hub where all the millennials are uh, drawn, attracted to where the jobs are. And that's driving the real estate prices, rental prices in those uh, three big cities. And now we hear it a lot from first time home buyers these days. They say the market's just too pricey. We can't afford a home. Now I know you're in the real estate business, but realistically, what can you tell people, uh, this younger generation so frustrated right now? So a couple of things need to change, you know, uh, to really bring the doubt of the younger generation uh, uh, to come back to uh, uh, own a home. And um, right now there is, um, you know, the interest rates are high, property is high, so there is a scare tactic with the younger generation in purchasing a home. But if you look at it over, you know, if you look at the, the um, prices, uh, the um, Lending uh, uh, in the 80s, it was double digits, way over what we are now. So, uh, you know, it's just trying to get that message out that it's really not as bad as what people think it is. You know, especially the younger generation, they've fallen into this mindset that it's really not achievable. And there are plenty of cities just outside of New York. There are enclaves of Queens and Brooklyn that are great, that are that are um, not as um, pricey. Mm -hmm. uh, there are places in San Diego, uh, closer to the border. I know it's a little <laughs> dangerous, but you get some very good prices and it's, the, the quality of living is very nice. Um, uh, Miami, same thing. There are some really nice enclaves uh, of Miami that are really affordable. We were just showing a four bedroom, a, a nice luxury four bedroom for just under a million dollars in Miami. So. There are potentials. You just have to find them and know the market that you're in and you want to be in. And also, I think we all know people who say they'd like to sell their current home and buy a new one, but due to interest rates, they're putting it off. Now, I know you talked about historic highs, but that was 40 years ago. So when you tell people yeah. that they're going to pay significantly more right now with interest rates than anybody has for a decade, it's, it's a hard sell. It is. It really is. And... Um, it, it, you know, it also goes hand in hand with the inventory. You know, I wish there was more builders, home builders in the market. There isn't. Uh, they're not building as fast and as much as they were three, four years ago, pre-pandemic. The, the cost of uh, the goods, lumber, windows, roofs, mm. it's just so much higher, about 20, 25 percent higher for just windows alone. So the cost of building these homes and then bringing it to the market for uh, a new homeowner has become very difficult for both the um, developers and the home and the home buyers. Yeah, I'm also curious about refinancing. Uh, you know, it's something that many people have done for a variety of reasons. Are people refinancing their homes right now, even with interest rates elevated? Uh, the ones that were stuck and they couldn't refinance about three, four, five years ago, uh, you, you see some of it. I know my uh, my friends in the lending business are uh, hurting. Um, you know, they're looking for business. They're always calling all the agents, you know, just try to send them business. Uh, the best thing you can do is find a good lender and really see what you can do to bring down your uh, refinance and bring down some of those home payments. There are some programs out there that will also help you with that.
Yeah. Uh, quickly, uh, talk about any kind of U.S. government programs that are out there to help current as well as prospective home, homeowners, especially first-time home buyer. So the, the, one of the best places to start is the FHA and the VA loans. Uh, they t generally don't have such big um, deposits uh, to put down to uh, lock in a rate. So the rates are pretty competitive. I would say that's a really good place to start. Uh, each city and, uh, you know, there's some really good grants out there for home buyers and people that are trying to refinance their first home. There are plenty of uh, grants out there that could really help out. I know this administration has been pumping some money into some of these grants mm -hmm. to help out homeowners and first-time home buyers.